Hey folks, your OS reviews. You're watching our video first look and quick review of the Aspen A1048. This is a 10.6 inch quad core Android tablet that runs on Android 5.1 Lollipop. It's a pretty stock install of Android, which is good to see, and it's also fairly affordable, coming in at under 100 bucks, and you can pick it up directly through Amazon.com. What makes the A1048 kind of unique is the fact that it has a 10.6 inch display as opposed to the traditional 10.1 inches, which is a lot more commonplace for Android based tablets that use a widescreen display. What's also unique here is the addition of front facing speakers, and there's one either side of the display, which we'll show you in a moment, that allows you to have a much better experience when listening to music and also watching videos. It's kind of similar to the HTC Boom Sound in that sense. In addition, this particular tablet also has two 3.5mm headphone jacks, which means that you can share music content with a friend or family member. So this is really designed to be a multimedia powerhouse with the fact that you can watch videos on a larger display. It's 0.5 inches larger than most tablets out there, the front facing speakers and the addition of a second uh, 3.5mm jack. Otherwise, underneath the hood, things are pretty standard. We have just one gig of RAM, which is a little bit low, but should be sufficient for most people's tasks. There are a few preloaded applications, as you can see on the sides here. You have access to all the traditional Android Google Play Store content. There's also an ebook store that's built in by the manufacturer, a trial version of Office Suite Pro, which is not the full version, unfortunately. It will expire after seven days. There's also a game store that's been siloed by the manufacturer, but that's basically it. Uh, otherwise, this is a MediaTek processor. It's a quad-core chipset, which is decent enough for web browsing and watching videos, but not going to be the best for playing back extensive 3D enabled games. It does have two cameras, one for video chatting on the front and one on the back. The box here is pretty simple. You can see that this device does have 8GB of built-in storage, expandable via a micro SD card, and the resolution is about 720p. It is an IPS display, so viewing angles are relatively wide, and again, the CPU here is the A33. And that's basically everything as far as the box is concerned. There is a micro USB charging cable inside, a warranty card, you also have access to a wall adapter, and that's it. There are no headphones included in the box itself. So taking a look at the design of the tablet next, you can see that there is a pre-installed screen protector which protects your investment. However, the screen itself is a little bit plasticky. It's not an actual Gorilla Glass screen. Uh, but with that being said, the construction quality here is definitely pretty good. A lot better than I expected, in fact, because the use of this polycarbonate frame as well as a soft touch rubber in the back makes sure that everything is pretty sturdy and it feels decent in the hand. It doesn't creak or cringe, so it feels like a solid piece of kit. The soft touch material on the back also prevents any scratches or fingerprints from showing up too easily. You have access to the Aspen logo as well as some basic info on the very back. What's also interesting here is a micro SD card expansion slot located on the very back as opposed to the side and that's because this tablet is very slim so they couldn't even fit the card slot on the side and had to move it over. You find access on the spine to the micro USB charging port for also syncing. There's the two aforementioned 3.5mm uh, jacks and on the very top there's access to a power on off switch as well as a volume rocker which is pretty tactile responsive and risen above the surface of the unit to be able uh, to be accessed. So as you can see here we have access to the two speakers on either sides which uh, pre prevents a pretty good multimedia experience for consumption. Bezels are respectable and you can still hold the device without having you cover up the screen. What I also like is the fact that the speakers themselves are off centered so as you can see here they're not exactly in the middle of the tablet, which means that when you're holding it, your hands aren't going to cover up the speaker grills. The top over here also features the front-facing camera, which you can use for video uh, chatting applications like Skype as well as WeChat. So as you can see here, we're greeted to a pretty vanilla build of Android 5.1 Lollipop. You can see that the screen uh, is decent enough, viewing angles are pretty good. Colors are a little muted, however, it's definitely going to be good enough for most folks, especially at this price point. There is Wi-Fi in addition to Bluetooth built on here, so that's a nice addition. So you can link it up to a Bluetooth headset for listening to music, as well as a keyboard for typing, and so on and so forth. So as you can see here, the overall experience is pretty snappy. There's a few built-in additions like AccuWeather on board. There's Swift Key for typing uh, a little bit faster if you don't like the built-in native keyboard, but we think it's good enough, as well as the traditional Android uh, built-in apps like the calendar. Uh, there's also the calculator, the Google Play Store, and the gallery. There's also a secondary browser, so you can see here that's built on here. Uh, that's 
I think not as good as the Chrome browser that you can sideload yourself, but it is a respectable job nonetheless. There's also a user manual built on here, as well as a brief or pretty sh easy to use file manager system that you can access. Google Maps is here, Shazam for listening, listening and searching up music is also here, as well as YouTube client. So taking a look at the browser first, we are synced and linked to Wi-Fi, so things should load up pretty quickly. As you can see, the overall experience is decent, and the multi-touch is also pretty lucid and responsive, so it definitely works pretty nicely in that department. Loading up more complex sites can be a bit more challenging, but uh, overall it only takes a few seconds to complete in most cases. The built-in keyboard here can also be programmed to different languages, and because the actual screen size here is 0.5 inches wider than most 10.1 inch tablets, you do have a bit more of screen estate to type on, and we find uh, that it's a bit more comfortable to sit on a table and then type this way. So for instance, if we want to search up New York Times, there we go. Let's take a look at how fast that takes to load. And you can see here that we have the full desktop version loaded by default as opposed to the mobile version, which is quite nice. Some flash elements will be fully working on this, so you can interact directly with the page and also the photos. You can see it's actually pretty fast and responsive. Um, and overall, I think that web browsing on here is a highlight just because the screen is pretty responsive, it's wide, and it makes for an enjoyable experience all in all. The Excel ROM drone here is also pretty fast, so you can definitely rotate the screen if you want to read it uh, for ebook reading or some other instances. And that's basically it. You can open up a few tabs, but if you open up more than five or six, the tablet does get a bit more sluggish and will be slower to operate. So down below here, you can see we have the virtual controls for all the Android keys, and we also have a screen capture key, so you can tap on that to capture whatever is on screen and save it into the gallery. So taking a look at the camera next, this is probably one of the weaker aspects of this particular tablet, uh, just because the tablet, the, the camera itself is only 2 megapixels on the back, and uh, it's, it's pretty rough in terms of the detail. However, I have to say that low light performance is better than I expected. Again, not that you're going to be taking too many images with a tablet in the first place, but if you do capture some shots in darker environments, it does seem to work decently, even though there isn't an addition of an LED flash or a vanity mirror. The interface here is pretty simple. You have some basic uh, things like grids that you can take a look at. You can change the timer for capturing your own images. You can also change the orientation to look at the front camera, which is about the same in terms of quality as the back camera. So overall, not the best, but uh, it is there and it does work. Finally, we're going to take a look at YouTube, and I'm going to show you how the sound quality using the front blasting speakers. Of course, you can use the Play Store as well to download all your favorite apps uh, and whatnot games and everything that we tried has loaded up well so far and because there is Bluetooth you can technically also go ahead and install any fitness tracking apps as well as smartwatch apps and that will work just fine because again you can use any Bluetooth functionality apps as well. So if we search up no copyright music and let's turn up the volume. Sound quality is definitely louder than you would expect from a tablet, uh, and the fact that it's on the front, it's not covered up, makes for a pretty immersive experience, especially since the two speakers are you know, not too close apart, they're sped apart, so it creates a three-dimensional effect when you're watching movies, especially action and suspense or thriller films, um, and it creates a pretty dynamic experience. It's not the richest speaker we've seen, sometimes sounds can be a little bit tinny when the volume gets too high, but overall, decent, the bass is also decent. You can also use this, of course, with any Google Chromecast devices to connect it to a projector or an HD television set, and that works nicely as well. So for video consumption, also a pretty good experience. As you can see, the screen does a respectable job, um, and it's comfortable enough to hold, lightweight enough to hold, and solid enough to hold for you to enjoy longer video clips as well. Alright, let's exit out of that. So at the end of the day, the Asbin 10.6 inch quad core Android tablet, the A1048, is a pretty good deal for the money. Other competitors to this would be the RCA Voyager uh, or also the 
Pro Series, uh, another 10-inch tablet, but that comes at a much steeper price point. Uh, in fact, we found that tablets that are pretty similar in specs to this particular model on Amazon as well as online tend to sell for 40 or 50 bucks more. And this one has a larger screen, it has a better speaker system, and also better for media consumption with that two 35 mil jack. It's also a pretty speedy and responsive experience overall. So definitely good value for the money, and I would recommend checking it out. You can learn more information about this tablet in our full written review, but this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the Aspen A1048 Android 10.6 inch tablet.